sight word vocabulary. A sight word is defined as a word that the reader knows instantly. The reader is able to go from the printed form of the word to the spoken form automatically. A special set of words are expected to become a part of every student's sight vocabulary. These are words that occur frequently in reading and writing. Because these words appear frequently, it is essential that students recognize them instantly. If a student cannot recognize them instantly, they cannot become fluent readers. Students often confuse certain sight words, especially those that have similar beginnings, such as when, where, and what, or this, that, and those. Students whose sight vocabularies are not at grade level will need some direct intervention to help them bring their sight vocabulary up to grade level. In advancing from grade to grade, students should increase their sight vocabulary at each grade level. If a student lacks appropriate sight word vocabulary, then teach students to visualize the words by outlining the shape of the word. Focus on overlearning two or three words per week or month as needed. Provide individualized word card rings of the words they know. Provide students with a card with the word on one side and a pictorial representation of the word on the other side. If the word cannot be represented with the picture, then the student must see and hear the word. If a student lacks appropriate sight word vocabulary, then have students practice writing the word in different mediums, wiki sticks. Take a word card on a scavenger hunt around the room. Look on charts and in books to find the word. Highlight the word within photocopied text. Have the student count the number of times the word appears in a given text. After a shared reading, have the student use a framing card to locate the given word. If a student lacks appropriate sight word vocabulary, then have the student build the word using magnetic letters and then write the word. Play my pile, your pile, flash word cards, no more than five to seven. Student must name the word in a couple of seconds to keep a card in their pile. Practice and graph the number of sight words the student can read in two minutes. Use a listening workstation where students can hear and follow along with the printed form of the story. If a student lacks appropriate sight word vocabulary, then Use computer-based stories where the words are highlighted as they are spoken and or where the reader places the cursor on individual words in order to hear the word being pronounced. During a book introduction, have the student name and frame words being learned. When a student stops at a known word, say, you know that word. Have the student name and sort words based on the number of letters initial letter, known words, challenging words. Phonics and decoding instruction. What is phonics and decoding instruction? Readers must know the association between a letter or letter combinations and the sound it represents. Decoding instruction teaches students how to pronounce a word by giving the correct sounds associated with the letters in the word. Instruction also teaches students how to decode multi-syllabic words such as crocodile and apply previously learned rules so they have a better understanding of new words. If a student does not understand that letters represent sounds, then work on two or three distinctly different sounds at a time. Provide opportunities for letter picture sorts and letter object sorts. Create collages of magazine photos representing a given sound. Play I Spy Something That Begins With. If a student does not understand that letters represent sounds, then play matching games and memory games with letters and pictures. Make books labeling pictures all with the same beginning sound. Assign one letter on which to become an expert. Its sound, shape, what it reminds you of, how your mouth is formed to make that sound. Routinely practice reciting the key word pictures represented in the ABC chart. If a student does not understand that letters represent sounds, then 
Pick an object and make its initial letter in a variety of mediums, clay, chalk, crayon. Paint a large consonant and surround it with pictures of things that start with it. Practice shared and interactive writing of labels, signs, and messages, modeling the isolation of the first sound and writing the letter for that sound. If a student does not locate words based on the initial sound, then place labeled cards to match pictures or items based on the first letter sound. Sort words, pictures, based on the first letter sound. Use a masking card to isolate the first letter of a word in a text. During a book introduction, ask the student to locate an unfamiliar word based on the first letter. Example, prompt, what letter would you expect to see at the beginning of? Photocopy a short text with pictures. Have the student highlight initial sound of key words and the picture that gives the clue for that word. If a student does not systematically decode polysyllabic words, then model how to divide words into syllables. Use a whiteboard to build new words with more complex rhymes. Systematically build familiarity with prefixes and suffixes. Show the student how to mask prefixes and suffixes with a finger. Have student cut words apart from word strips. Have student highlight or circle familiar parts and letter clusters. If a student does not apply decoding strategies, then teach that there are three kinds of words. Sight words, the kind you know and recognize in a snap. Sound out, that kind you can slide across slowly and read. Use analogy man can, the kind that reminds you of a known word. Use word wall activities. Present activities that create familiarity with common word parts. Teach how to make analogies to known words and model how to notice familiar word parts in text. Play Guess My Word by giving one clue at a time to reveal the mystery word from the word wall. Phonics and decoding instruction. If a student does not apply decoding strategies, then Write a word on a whiteboard and demonstrate how to chunk familiar clusters across a longer word. Teach students to mark off familiar affixes, ed, ing. Provide an at-a-glance personal word wall for the student to add to and reference during reading and writing. Provide word sorts and word hunts in which students search for specific features. Teach students to use the following decoding strategies. Eagle eye, look at the pictures, look at the picture for clues. Lips the fish, get your lips ready. Say the first few sounds of the new word. Read to the end of the sentence and say it again. Stretchy snake, stretch it out. Stretch the word out slowly, put the sounds together. Chunky monkey, chunk the word. Look for a chunk that you know, like at, and. Skippy frog, skip it, skip it. Skip the word, read to the end of the sentence, hop back and read it, read it. Try and lion, try it again. Try to reread the sentence, try a word that makes sense. Flip the dolphin, flip the vowel sound, try the other vowel sound. Flip a short sound for a long sound and vice versa. Helpful kangaroo, ask for help. Ask for help after you have tried all of the other strategies. Letter formation and spelling instruction. Letter formation. If a student lacks instant letter formation, then play flash and write. Using letter cards, flash a letter for the student to name, cover it while the student quickly forms the letter, and check the card against the formed letter. Explicitly teach sets of letters that have the same starting spot. Practice starting spots and verbalize the formation path. Provide multiple opportunities to trace letters using the correct starting spots. Spelling. If a student lacks encoding skills, then create word family charts based on common spelling patterns. Categorize words on a word wall based on common spelling patterns. Use word building and making words materials to practice taking apart and reading words with a consonant, vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel, consonant, final E patterns. 
Sort words according to spelling patterns. Play games such as memory and go fish. Create anchor charts containing words with specific letter sound relationships and spelling patterns. Place no excuse words on a word wall. Students will begin to develop word consciousness for the spelling of these words in their writing as well as noticing them in oral language and reading. Write words in thick black ink on sentence strips. Cut around the word so students can see the word shape. Place the words on the wall alphabetically. Provide opportunities to practice no excuse words daily using the following activities. Speed reading. Practice reading no excuse words quickly to build fluency. Be a mind reader. Students must number their papers. The teacher thinks of a no excuse word and then gives clues for that word. No excuse bingo. This game is similar to bingo. Each student needs a word card and chips to cover the words. Students write no excuse words randomly on their word card. The teacher calls a word out and if it's on the student's card, they mark it with a chip. Review endings with the no excuse words. Begin with just one ending, S. Then do another ending, such as ING or ED. Then combine them so the students are listening for all the words and endings. Flashlight. Flashlight, flashlight, shine your light on the word and we will write. Word wall aerobics. Tall letters. Students stand and stretch their arms to the ceiling. Middle letters. Students place their arms on hips. Low letters. Students touch their toes. Make a sentence. Dictate a sentence using several no excuse words. Vary the sentences to require the use of question marks and exclamation marks. Students can also create their own sentences. Say it like. Choose a no excuse word and ask students to chant the spelling of the word in different voices. Cheerleader, football player, elf, giant, soft, loud, whisper, computer, baby, or president. Drill sergeant. Listen as I say each word, then chant the word you have heard. No excuse words. It is fun. Now we are officially done. Word process. Type no excuse words on the computer. Change each vowel to a different color. ABC order. Write no excuse words in ABC order. Rainbow words. Write no excuse words using a different color for each letter. Stair steps. Write no excuse words as if they are stairs, adding one letter at a time. Fluency instruction. Fluency is the ability to read a text accurately. Fluent readers read aloud effortlessly and with expression. Their reading sounds natural as if they are speaking. Readers who have not yet developed fluency read slowly, word by word. Their oral reading is choppy and plodding. Fluent readers demonstrate appropriate stress on words, pausing and phrasing, intonation, and the use of punctuation while reading in a way that reflects understanding. Fluent readers self-correct using meaning information and knowledge of decoding strategies. Fluency is important because if a student spends a lot of time trying to focus on reading individual words, it is easy to lose track of the text as a whole, and then they may not properly understand what they are reading. Fluency strategies. In echo reading, the teacher reads first and then the student repeats what the teacher reads. Material can be read in either phrases or sentences. Choral reading. The teacher reads a short passage or poem aloud with expression. The students and teachers discuss the text in order to ensure that they have a shared understanding of the passage. Then the class reads the passage aloud in unison. Students can then complete paired repeated readings of the text, followed by having the option of reading the passage aloud in front of their classmates. Sustained silent reading. This gives students a daily opportunity to read and increases the amount of connected text students are responsible for reading. Reader's Theater. A group of students practice reading material that can be adapted easily for reading aloud. There is no need to memorize their parts, create a set, props, or costumes. Students are expected to create their performances entirely through their expressive 
reading of the text. Repeated timed readings. A student reads for one minute. Use a passage at their instructional level. The text should be decodable, not predictable. Count the number of words read and graph the results. Repeat this procedure to plot improvement on the graph. Paired repeated readings. Students read their passage silently. The first partner then reads his or her passage aloud to their partner a total of three times. During each reading, the partner listens carefully and comments on ways in which the performance has improved. If a student frequently appeals for help and gives up easily, be cautious of jumping in too quickly and teaching helplessness. Set an expectation that students initiate some problem-solving strategies before being helped. Use a bookmark illustrating strategies you have practiced. Ask student to pick one and try it. Students read a passage orally and the teacher provides guidance and feedback using the following questions and prompts. Does that sound right? Does that look right? Does that make sense? Look at the word. Does it look like? You said, does it look like? Look for chunks you know and say them. Look at the beginning of the word and try it again. Look at the end of the word and try it again. Make your reading sound like the characters are talking. Make your voice go up when you see the question mark at the end. Make your voice go down when you see the period at the end. Listen to my voice as I read the next sentence. Am I reading it fluently? Now you try. Read it like you are talking. Try it. Could it be or... Read that again and try to make a word that would make sense and sounds right. You said, is that how we would say it? If a student misreads punctuation affecting comprehension, model the difference between word by word and fluent phrasing. Model a variety of intonations and adjusted reading rates. Once student easily attends to print, encourage reading without pointing to every word. Find text with refrains and repetition. Glide a masking card along the text from left to right to encourage eye movement across the text. Provide many opportunities for reading lots of easier, familiar texts. Photocopy a passage and mark the natural phrases with slash marks. Students can listen to your voice while you model fluent reading during read-alouds. Students self-monitor their reading by going back and rereading when it does not sound or look like they think it should. Students practice dialogue to make reading sound like the characters are talking. Teach punctuation as road signs. Explicitly teach how the author uses punctuation marks to signal how to read a passage. Ask student, what should your voice do when you see a comma, period, a question mark, or an exclamation point? Have a student point to the important punctuation marks that show him or her when to slow down. Photocopy a passage eliminating punctuation. Show how punctuation placement affects reading. Vocabulary instruction. Vocabulary knowledge is defined as the ability to go from the printed word form of a word to its meaning. Vocabulary instruction teaches students to recognize words they are reading while building and understanding new words. A student may know the meaning of a word at five different stages has no recognition of the word, has never seen it before, recognizes the word, has heard of the word, has no knowledge of meaning, recognizes the word in context and has a vague understanding of its meaning, knows the meaning of the word in the context in which it appears, knows the multiple meanings of the word, and can use the word in thinking, speaking, or writing. If a student does not comprehend vocabulary or terminology basic to the text plot meaning, then directly teach vocabulary related to the topic or important to the story. Have student preview and identify words he, she does not know. Have students sort words or phrases under category headings. Demonstrate and practice inferring for meaning using context clues. Place newly learned vocabulary words on a word wall. If a student does not comprehend vocabulary or terminology basic to the text plot meaning, then have student turn to a page and see if they can find a specific word. Make sure student encounters a new word many times and in many contexts. 
assist student to understand words that are used figuratively, integrate previously known definitions with new ones as they meet them in texts to realize that a word can have several definitions. Help student to understand words that are used figuratively. Notice and discuss new and interesting words, record them, and encourage student to actively use them when speaking or writing. Comprehension instruction. Comprehension has been called the essence of reading. It is the reason we read. Comprehension instruction teaches students to become capable of understanding written material and to monitor their own understanding while they read. Readers are encouraged to ask questions if they notice gaps in their understanding, while also linking what they are reading to information they have previously learned. If a student does not make predictions for plausible outcomes, then give guided practice in making predictions based on illustrations, titles, and background knowledge. Think aloud to model making multiple predictions based on clues and background knowledge. Think aloud to model making predictions and revising them based on evidence from the story. If a student does not recall information from a read aloud, use an interactive format during read alouds. Stop periodically to ask questions and to share responses during reading. Have student describe what he or she pictures after hearing a text read aloud. Stop at points in a read aloud to illustrate, sketch what is happening so far. Have students reenact parts of the story. If a student presents many misconceptions regarding literal information, then provide more supportive book introductions. Check comprehension more frequently on shorter portions of the text. Set a specific purpose for reading. Focus on just one story element at a time. Use story maps and graphic organizers. Practice the strategy of visualizing as you go, sharing quick sketches or verbal descriptions. Teach student to find the five W's. Who, what, where, when, why. If a student does not easily identify the main idea, practice with a detailed picture to identify the whole idea versus the details. Link important details together and name the way they connect to the main idea. Teach student to look at the beginning or end of the passage or paragraph to locate the topic sentence and highlight it. Have student create titles for paragraphs, chapters, or articles. Cut titles off of short articles and have students match them up. Have student create a list of keywords and write a summary statement. If a student does not recall events or details in sequential order, then model and practice verbally retelling the beginning, middle, and end of a familiar story. Have students sequence sentence strips or pictures telling a familiar story. Photocopy a short story to be cut into chunks of text and sequenced. Photocopy a story and have students highlight signal words that indicate sequence. Play memory games, sequencing objects, books, numbers, or events of the day. Link sequencing to summarizing small portions of the text as you go. If a student does not stop and monitor when meaning breaks down, then consider the book selection. Is it just right for the student to access vocabulary and concepts? Cover the text but not the picture, and before the student reads a given page, ask him or her to predict what will happen on that page. Encourage students' predictions, connections, and visualizations. Periodically have student write or tell what is happening in the story so far. Explicitly repeat frequently to student, everything you read should make sense. Have student arrange sentences or pictures in logical sequence. If a student does not sustain information across a longer text, then have students stop at appropriate points during reading to recount what is happening before reading on. Have student do a quick write for one minute after each portion of the text. Have student do a quick draw, a fast sketch, showing character, action, after each portion of the text. If a student does not reread to deepen understanding, then use a think aloud to model self-questioning and how rereading supports having questions answered. 
Make sure texts are at an appropriate level and interest to student. Provide more supportive book introductions and picture walks to build background knowledge. Have students write questions about the text topic in a response journal. Teach how to go back in the text to locate the answer to one's own questions. During discussions of the text, find opportunities to return to the text for evidence or to listen again to the author's use of words. Have students confirm or revise their predictions by asking him, her, is that what I thought would happen? If a student does not efficiently scan text for key information to answer question or locate supportive evidence, then set a specific purpose for reading based on genre, structure, interest, or predictions. Teach student to read questions first to help set a purpose. Have the student recall the general sequence of what has already been read and to segment the passage into sections to help with searching. Have student highlight keywords in text that link to the question. Teach student to notice signal words, first, next, in addition, finally, in conclusion, and to anticipate the possible answer and possible words, phrases to scan for. If a student does not use informational text features to gather information before and during reading, then model how different text features are used to help make meaning in the text. Have student locate specific text features across a variety of informational texts and build familiarity with what each provides. Provide a more in-depth introduction to include the layout of informational text features. Have student write captions, make a table of contents, generate graphs and charts for books that do not have them or for books they create on a topic of interest. If a student does not recognize informational text structures to help set a purpose for reading, then introduce six text structures and their attributes showing specific examples. Descriptive, chronological, problem, solution, compare, contrast, questions, answer, cause, effect. Have students work in pairs to generate six sentences on one topic representing each structure. Create an anchor chart of signal words associated with each structure. Read aloud informational text and think aloud what structure the text might be and why. Before reading, have student anticipate the content based on the identified structure. Using a stack of informational texts, have student groups label the text structure with sticky notes. Have student use a graphic organizer match to each text structure to take notes.